So what I want to end with is I want to give you uh, a little bit of a preview of stuff that's coming up uh, in Vegas. Uh, it's still work in progress, and uh, this is actually coming in those underlying JavaScript libraries, so we're busy wrapping it and trying to make it available in Vegas too, but they're doing some really exciting work I wanted to share with you. Uh, so the next thing that's coming is making these interactive, and I think that's the real advantage of using the technologies that we are. So you know, using JavaScript and, and HTML, uh, unlike Matplotlib, where when you're in IPython and you're doing Matplotlib, it's really just a static image. Because this is all rendered on the fly, these things are actually interactive. Uh, so that should be something we can take advantage of, and indeed we are. So we're, they're extending out the grammar uh, to provide options, a, a kind of a, a grammar for how you can interact with these visualizations too. Uh, so we're going to have options in there for being able to uh, select certain items on the graph, uh, uh, select multiple ones, um, do a whole list, uh, do a paintbrush type select, so as you move the mouse across it will select a whole bunch. But these are all options that will be expressed actually in the grammar itself. Um, and we're also going to support going as far as having, uh, you can uh, lock the, the selections to particular axes as well. So if you want people to select uh, a range across the x-axis or y-axis you can, uh, or a rectangle. Um, and then the next step that the, the grammar takes and the final thing that we're working on is that if you want to have a couple of plots on the screen and you want an interaction you make here to actually update the other chart. So you can imagine maybe one is like, uh, let's say you have your overview time series where you've got, you know, from the beginning of time to the end of time and it's got all this very fine data in there. But above it, you want a bigger chart that zooms into a, a, a part that you've selected in the underlying graph. It's a very kind of common uh, JavaScript um, type visualization that I think Google has a nice little widget for. But, you know, if you wanted to do that in a generic way where you can connect up any series of plots to each other on the screen and one interaction and one will update the other, uh, we'll also support that. Um, I, I won't play the video, so I have a little video of that stuff working. Well, you can start. Um, but, um, oh, don't worry, it's got sound actually, I won't. But I'll leave that in the slides and we'll send around the slides. So if you want to see that working, um, you can have a look in the slides and it's pretty cool. Uh, and I shall end there. Uh, and do you have any questions? Uh, it's in the browser, so um, our philosophy with that is that you can think of it as there being, there being two engines here behind it. So we think that the right place to do that is in Spark itself. We're not trying to like reproduce what Spark's done. Uh, but once you've got, once you've pre-aggregated or pre-filtered down your data set that's maybe huge to uh, something that is more manageable and you want visualized, then the, pr the primitives that we have in here are really just for that kind of last step for how you display it on screen. Yeah, so they're, they're separate. So, uh, two more questions. Yeah. Yes, uh, okay, so the first question was, why Vegas, why not use Plotly? Uh, so uh, there, there's actually a number of great visualization libraries for a lot of different languages, but not really for Scala. Uh, Plotly, I think, is one of the, the better ones because it has quite wide support for a number of languages, but its Scala support is actually not very good. And what we're really trying to do is plug the gap for Scala. Uh, I think if you're already in Python, there's probably a dozen already great options. Uh, there's actually a library in Python uh, that's very similar to us based on the same underlying technologies called Altair, yeah. um, which, Python. Yeah. which is in Python, yeah. So we, we have a kind of sister project that's in Python as but well. But in Plotly also you have to send the data across, right, to the server. Um, uh, yeah, uh, th there's an architectural difference too that was, at least for us, it, it was a requirement for us. And that Plotly, it's a client-server type 
architecture from what I've seen. So that the, you specify what you want to have plotted, it goes to their server, they do some calculation, and they return HTML or something still, but I think there's a client server type thing. It's not just a pure JavaScript library. From what I've seen, I might be wrong. Okay. Um, and then your second question was, uh, Yep. Uh, so the question is, how, how do you deliver this? So you've got a graph, how do I send this around? Well, we're not solving that problem too. We are solving getting it in the notebook. So once you've got it in your Jupyter notebook or uh, Zeppelin, uh, it's rendered in there and it's static, so it'll stay in there. That doesn't go away, so you just send someone the notebook. Yeah. Uh, question? Uh, yeah, we've pushed it a little to see what we could get away with. Uh, it is all happening in JavaScript in the browser, so there's definitely a limitation. The idea is that you do what you need to do beforehand in Spark. Uh, we've pushed it to around 200K, and it seemed to be fine. Uh, beyond that, it works. Yeah, leaks <laughs> <Yeah>. sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, I, I think that's one of the, the, the strengths, actually, of the underlying thing that we're using. Uh, so we didn't come up with this grammar thing. It's based on Vigalite, and they've got this very kind of uh, beautiful language that they've come up with uh, to express uh, a lot of these configurations. And I just showed you the obvious things here, but there's like hundreds, 300 yeah, different three configuration three. options. Uh, yeah. Yes. You know, everything they... Everything Vega Lite has, uh, yeah. Uh, but it's feature complete with Vega Lite, uh, and yeah, there's hundreds of configuration options. And I think the layout is a lot more logical as well. So I feel I feel like they're a lot easier to discover and use than Matplotlib. <laughs> uh, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Oh. oh, that's a good question. Uh, so I don't think we'd support that. So, so, so to repeat the question is, uh, you've made some, you've got an interactive graph, you, you have interacted with it, you've zoomed it, you've pulled it, you've done whatever, but you want to lock that in now because that's the thing that you want to share with people. It doesn't support that, but I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I think the interactivity just persists across the board, right? So. I think that's missing, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's a good thing for us to think about, though. That's an interesting one. So if I wanted to do, try it out in a Python Jupyter notebook, is it import something as, or how do you do that? Uh, for Python? Yeah, even mm -hmm. for a Python Jupyter notebook, is it import Vega as VG? Or? Uh, well, uh, you have to be in Scala. So we support IPython as in the notebook, but you need, it's only yeah. Scala. Uh, there's, there's another library called Altair, which is exactly this, but in Python, which not done by us, it's done by someone else, uh, but it's, it's very similar, and that's in Python. Yeah. Uh, so there shouldn't be any... Any, it should come batteries included, uh, so I'll have a chat to you after if there was something going wrong. Uh, but yeah, you should just uh, follow the instructions in the README. It's one jar that you need to import, uh, and that should pull in all its transitive dependencies, and then you need to import it. But yeah. There's a question here. Uh, well, yeah, I think that's one of the interesting aspects. Because we have support for Spark, it can be on a remote server. So 
we're only handling the visualization part, but we rely on Spark to do the rest. And then, you know, Spark has distributed data sets across different servers. Uh, so because we're plugging into Spark, all that, we get all that stuff for free. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're not supporting streaming currently. Yeah, we, we've just focused on more that kind of uh, interactive use case. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Thanks, everyone. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Ash, and thank you, Sandeep. It's a great talk. I'm probably going to use it myself. <laughs> thank you very, very much for everybody coming. We have uh, several great uh, talks coming up. Uh, I think the next one is uh, DCOS, uh, and then after that, we have a great machine learning talks and a paper being published uh, this year at the NIPS and being translated into Chinese. And then I got the hold of the author, and he's in Bay Area. It's going to give a talk. And then there was another one, which I haven't announced, it's going to be announced in a couple of days, that is a professor from Duke University going to talk about the, you know, deep learning using different, different type of hardware, so CPU, GPU, FGPA. So you know, look up the Meetup page, and there's a lot of talks. Okay, thank you.
for play now. Are you trying to collapse it? Yeah, I'm trying to get it out. So uh, when do I, do you think I can get the, the recording? Um, I don't know that you're looking at it right now. <laughs>